What's up, YouTube? I am just getting set up here, so bear with me. Hey everyone, so, um, give me a uh, hello and let me know if you're here. You can hear me fine. It's been a while since I've done the YouTube live session, but um, I'm ready to uh, do some technicals for y'all. All right, guys. I'm gonna wait for a few more people to join. Actually, what I'll do is let me post this link to um, my other groups that I'm a part of and let me do this real quick going live Oops. go I hope y'all are doing well. Hope you're ready for a good stream tonight. I am. Um, it's been a while since I've gotten on, but um, ready to show you guys some some magic. We're gonna have a good time tonight. All right. So there's that link. That link. Let me throw it in this group. I'm part of so many different groups, and I totally forgot about Telegram too. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to have to let everyone know because I know these groups like to have me let them know when I'm going live. All right. Okay, everyone. Right, folks give me another minute and uh, we'll have a few more people joining and then we'll get right to the technical analysis okay um, but if you are new here uh, say hi my name is Amal by the way I am the head analyst of the Cryptosomniac community I haven't done a, um, a YouTube live session in a little while but for those of you who are loyals and veterans to this channel or you've uh, heard of me on TradingView, um, you know, you've probably seen my work on TradingView, here's some of our TA, um, we're usually featured on the, the front page quite often, um, typically like, you know, I post um, public analysis maybe like once or twice a week, and then for the most part I provide private analysis for our Cryptosomniac Advantage members. Um, but yeah, welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome Michael, welcome Adaption Ideas, welcome Balkan Lar, welcome Lolita, welcome Let's Go Vin, welcome Life Size Box, welcome Tony Stallone. All right guys, let's get right to it. So first things first, I'm gonna explain a couple of um, pieces of terminology that I'm gonna go through today. Um, just so you guys aren't lost when I'm, you know, speaking. Um, so basically, I'll talk about order blocks, which basically are a large purchase of securities and assets by big players or institutions. And again, you can go and find my analysis here on um, the Trading View Cryptosomniac channel. Okay, um, and you can look at, you know, my explanation. So typically, when I, you know, do my technicals, I try to do a good job of trying to explain everything that I can in layman's terms because I know um, technicals can be hard to understand 
and it doesn't feel good when people are you know essentially talking really fast and you don't understand what's going on or they're talking down to you which seems to be the case with a lot of the community and i think that happens because you know <laughs> a majority of people don't really know what they're talking about and um you know here in the cryptosomnia community we want to teach you rather than just you know throw words at you and throw complicated patterns and whatnot so with that being said you know let me uh, do my best to explain every little thing I go through today and so you guys understand and you learn and you apply yourself to your charts okay so order blocks right okay large purchase of securities assets um, you know by big players and institutions so you know, typically bullish order blocks are created by a big down move that proceeds by an up move you know and that resumes the trend and I'll, again i'll go through these on the chart itself so you have a better understanding bearish order block is just the other way around um you know instead of a down move preceding an up move a bearish bearish order block is created by an up move um, before a down move okay um, eq means equilibrium basically like a middle point middle range 50 percent point of a fibonacci um, that could be seen as an eq um, resistance is basically price unable to pass through an overhead level support is price unable to you know break through a um, support level below okay um what else that's all i can think of for now i'm gonna try to keep it um fairly um you know intermediate level nothing too high level so let's get right to it guys okay so btc us dollar pairing one hour chart coinbase exchange okay so you can see that all right here um so on the one hour chart guys what we've been seeing is you know this you know clean dump off from um 3600 dollars and right down we you know stood here for 3300 at 3300 for a good day and then dumped down low and then clearly there was a presence of bulls down here at this price rejecting the price from going any lower absorbing the supply and pushing the prices higher but here's the thing right we are now stuck in a middle range of you know this previous swing right here okay so this area right here and the price now being um you know almost a FOMO pump okay so this pump right here is essentially a pump to get people trapped in whether they want to go long people think that this is the bottom and you know they spot buy and more than likely this price is going to you know move up kind of like this and then come down again okay this happens quite a bit because you know oftentimes people think that they want to catch the bottom um and they think that you know they know where the bottom is and you know let me let me tell you okay no one really knows what the, where the bottom is um and anyone who tells you they do is lying okay so the things about the, the thing about spotting bottoms is that you want to be careful to not buy any time when you think that okay this is the low of the chart um, the low of the asset and we're not going to go any lower well it's you never know when that's going to happen unless um, you see a low established and then a higher low on a higher time frame okay um, and you can't tell that unless you see consecutive days or maybe even weeks of higher lows being established so let me give you a perfect example okay so we're going to go through um, the brave uh, new coin liquid index so i like to pick this because it has a lot of history of uh, bitcoin so here's the low of bitcoin in 2015 okay um we now have a 163 dollar low right here right in a weekly chart and then after that you can see that we spent consecutive weeks and maybe even months you know it's essentially defending this area right here which is right around two hundred dollars okay so even if you miss the boat of 163 dollars back in 2015 you probably would have spotted you know this kind of higher lows being picked off 
and you could have bought here, right? Around two hundred dollars, even two forty. Let's just say two fifty, okay? Um, and when you take that in context with the bull run from two fifty to twenty thousand, you know it it basically dwarfs the view of trying to catch the bottom at one sixty three. And the reason why you don't try to catch the bottom is because you don't know if prices are going to go lower, right? Like that. Um, you just don't know. So you want to wait and be sure and find confirmation in prices that, okay, if a bottom has been established, I don't want to be the person with bloody hands, right? You want to make sure that the real bulls with, you know, smart money might be defending their price. And then you step in when you know that higher lows have been established. So in this case, right, let me zoom into this chart right here. Okay, so here's the 2015 chart. So here's that low. Here's multiple weeks of higher lows. Prices go up, retrace again, come back to the higher low again. So you have one opportunity right here. Okay, you can even buy right here. That's two opportunities, three four, five, six, seven, and then it just starts taking off, okay? So you had almost um, January 2015 all the way till September 2015, okay? That's about nine months of a bottom being put in. Now this is how bottoms are created. Not some random bullshit like, you know, these V-shaped, you know, turnarounds, okay? Those happen because Conditions have been um, massively oversold for a quick second. Bulls push up the price, but then bears take over like they do right here. And then price gets dumped again and again, and then all the way down to this level. And you know that, okay, well, prices are not getting defended. Higher lows are not being um, held, and lower highs are being created. So this is not how bottoms get created. Whoever was saying, you know, back in the day, 6,500 or 6,000 was the bottom. <laughs> Sakura is here. Um, Sakura is a, uh, you know, uh, one of my colleagues from another channel, really good guy. I know he's kidding about 6k was, was the bottom. Um, but anyway, whoever was saying that 6k was the bottom was dumb. Okay. Um, they had no idea what they were talking about. You don't you don't look at a bottom and think that, you know, um, bottoms are created like this, okay? Bottoms are not created when prices are essentially creating lower highs like this and then moving sideways like that, okay? Bottoms are created when, when two conditions are met, okay? The market as a whole, the sentiment has turned to overly bearish, okay? prices are overextended to the downside okay just like prices were overextended to the upside right here right this run up from you know the 163 dollar bottom to 20,000 that's an overextension of prices now what's going to happen in crypto is we're going to see an overextension of prices to the downside to you know levels that no one will have imagined and you're going to think that the space is dead and you're going to say, fuck Bitcoin, I don't want to touch it, I hate crypto. That's when the real players of the market and the smart money is going to step in. When all the retailers have given up hope and you have essentially handed off your holdings and your cryptos to um, the strong hands, okay? That's when bottoms will be created, okay? When they have accumulated enough um, Bitcoin or crypto from you, okay? So, and, and that will happen, right? I mean, it's already happened significantly. No one thought 6,000 was gonna break, and it broke, right? And people started capitulating right here. But this is not the end of capitulation right here, okay? So remember, watch, watch this kind of move right here, okay? This is weeks on end from December 2014 all the way to the final week in January 2015. So that's about six weeks of capitulation that we had from taking prices from almost, you know, $400 all the way to, you know, 163, right? Um, you know, that's basically half of, you know, the, the um, 
the, the price range, right, from 400 to 163. I mean, even lower. So if we held that same standard, prices might, may go to $1,500 or so. And this is another chart that I mocked up um, that I wanted to show y'all um, just from a technical vantage point, okay? So here's the chart that I've done. Oh, not stack, sorry, that's just a, uh, um, a stock that I was charting for someone. Um, so here is the, let me pull this up real quick. Okay, so here we are, okay? Um, now remember, I told you guys what order blocks mean, right? So remember what I said, okay? So here's where prices are right now, okay? We're in the middle of this order block right here. And remember, order blocks, the bullish order blocks, right, are created by a down move that precedes an up move. So here we are. Here's the down move from 2017, right? Down move preceded by an up move, okay? So in this case, um, you can see that between $4,700 and $3,000, we had, um, currently we are in that order block, okay? We broke through $4,700 pretty cleanly, right? On the, day, uh, on the weekly chart. And now we're essentially looking at 33 or $3,400, okay? Again, this is uh, BLX prices, so they update end of day. Um, but we, you could see that we're essentially floating right in the middle, okay? This, this is no man's land. I mean, there's no support here, at least from the perspective of, of an order block. Unless, you know, new buyers are going to step in right here um, and defend prices at 3,400, saying that, hey, this is too low, I don't see prices holding up here. I see the bottom being touched at 3,000 because this is where that big wick came in, right? So here's that wick from September 11, 2017, where prices dipped all the way to um, 2,900 or 3,000 and price got pushed back up. And they said, no, no thank you, that's too low. I believe um, Bitcoin is valued higher than that. So here we are, right? Um, between $3,300. Um, let me answer this question by lock. Okay, so bullish order block is just different terminology for support zone. Um, lock, uh, you're, you're essentially right. Um, however, order blocks need to be looked at from the perspective of previous buyers and where exactly price gets uh, rejected hard from, okay? Uh, meaning that when um, in 2017, there was a big down move um, and then uh, succeeded by an up move, right? This area right here, these are the buyers who stepped in and pushed the prices up. Now these same buyers are, are, are basically holding up this block right here, meaning they probably have stop losses set, they're probably watching the charts, algos, bots, whatever, right? And if prices dip past this, okay, so let's just say it hits their stops, you know, one to 2% down, maybe at 2,800, 2,700, this is where you'll see capitulation, okay? Um, you've already seen it capitulate, right? Once price enters a order block, you see a steep drop, okay? That's exactly what happens, okay? Um, and now you can see that prices are being held up at a level that doesn't make any sense, 33, $3,400. And so, you know, more than likely, prices are going to reach the bottom of the OB, which is 3,000. And then after that, you have another order block right here. Same thing, right? There's multiple OBs in this case, right? Here's the one between 30, uh, 3,000 and 1,800. This one is between 4,700 and 3,000. This one up here that I mentioned um, a little while back was anywhere between 7,900 and 5,500. And so now here we are, okay? Prices are essentially floating at a no man's land and they're more than likely destined to head towards 3,000. It, it will happen, okay? And it may even dip lower. But then what, what then after that? Well, then we'll have to see if enough bulls come in and defend the prices at 3,000. If not, we'll just go to the next one. Now, after that, here's something interesting that I found is, at least in the stock market, right? Um, typically, when there are gaps to be filled, whether it's a candle 
um, you know, that opens with a gap in the middle, kind of like that. So this area right here would be the gap. Okay, those likely get filled in a uh, in the typical, you know, traditional markets. Here in the crypto markets, I haven't really seen anything like that. However, I'd be curious to see if this, you know, theory of mine holds up. Okay, whether it's the gap of this horizontal support and resistance being retested, kind of like this right here. You can see how, you know, um, April 2013 prices reached, you know, 163, got rejected hard, um, came back down, retraced, and then pushed up again. And then after a huge bear market, prices came back down almost to that same level, tested it as support, and then took off. So if that's the case, right, where is a level that hasn't really been tested that needs to get tested? Well, I see it anywhere between this 1200 to um, $1,900 gap. This may not be, you know, um, <laughs> this may not be a scenario that you guys want to hear about, but it could be possible if prices just keep dipping. This would be the area, right? Um, and worst case scenario, they might stop, you know, right around this $1,100, $1,200 level because this is where the um, previous resistance was. So just like this flip right here that happened, resistance here and then support here, you could see the same thing happening right here, right? You could see prices dip down right here all the way, okay? And then you could see this level being, you know, resistance. Oh God, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, you guys know what I mean. You could see this level being resistance, this level, this price action coming down all the way here, meeting it, right? And then we start moving up and away from here, okay? It could very well come true. I honestly don't think prices are going to reach a thousand, um, but listen, again, you know, as I mentioned earlier, capitulation and overextended, uh, overextension to the downside happens when people largely in the entire space have essentially given up and everyone just hates crypto, thinks it's dead or, thinks Bitcoin is dead and move on. And then the real, you know, smart money, um, big money steps in and they create a bottom and then they take the prices up to um, higher highs, you know, higher than you can ever imagine. Okay, and this happens in a slow process because, you know, I'll tell you one thing, when institutions and smart money does step in, they're going to run a tight ship. They're not going to have, you know, bullshit wicks like this going up and down, you know, um, uh, mark prices, it's just not going to happen. Okay, they're going to have uh, nice solid checks, you know, weed out weak hands as prices go up. So, what they're going to do is, you know, move prices up, get a nice profit check, move it down, retrace, move it back up like that. Um, uh, profit check, move down, retrace, move it up nice and slow, you know, 45 degree angle moves, right? And then this area right here, okay, so like right around here, this steep move, this is where, you know, in the last um, $5,000 or so, they are starting to sell while the, pan, um, the, the FOMO and the mania is starting to set in into the retailers and they're buying. Okay, so this is um, how um, the, the institutions play the markets, okay? they are selling when you are buying. So you need to know exactly when the institutions are selling because you need to look at the volume. You need to look at, is there, you know, an overall bearish or bullish sentiment in the market? Like, you know, in 2017, I mean, you could go, you know, uh, have your average Uber driver, cab driver be like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm invested in Bitcoin. I'm about to buy more Bitcoin or whatever. That's when you know you need to sell. Because when the average, you know, Joe Schmo on the street is buying, then you know that prices are way too high. Like this is, it's, it's, you know, topping off. You're, you need to sell, okay? Um, and if you, if you were part of our crypto sounding community, we mentioned this multiple times. We didn't mention it right at the top, but we mentioned it, you know, around uh, 12,000, uh, 14,000, okay? So keep that in mind, guys. And we also mentioned it multiple times, around 10,000, around 8,500. And you would look 
pretty smart if you took our you know um, uh, analysis seriously because now you'd be essentially you know double your Bitcoin value if even if you sold at um, eighty five hundred okay so here we are right at prices at thirty four hundred dollars so let's get to real time data right so BTC US dollar pairing okay. Um, I'm gonna close out this one and open this one right here. And I'm gonna get to that chart real quick. Okay, first let me get through the uh, questions that I see. Um, okay, hey, thanks for joining Locke. Uh, the super heart, thank you for joining. I don't know what you're selling, but I'm not interested in buying right now. Uh, Sakura says 10K. Uh, or ten dollars ETH when? I don't know about ten dollars, but I really do think that fifty to seventy-five dollar range is definitely possible for ETH. Um, you know, I honestly think that ETH was due for a wrecking. I mean, I did not think that it would come down um, lower than a hundred, but I actually charted ETH a little while back, and I stated that. Um, if ETH breaks $154, which was one of its old supports, it will more than likely go to 85. And you can see right here, I wrote this, um, you know, months ago, right? So I said, look, I said breaking, you know, $154 support will basically, you know, um, bring ETH to a free fall at less than $100. And my final support was this one right here. See, $85. Okay. Other than that, I mean, I honestly, like the next support is like way down here, you know? And again, this is this is like your mini flag right here before prices took off. So there's, again, this could be seen as like a order block, right? So here you could see prices may dip down to 42 and then you could take off, okay? Um, who knows, right? I mean, Honestly, it all really depends on BTC. BTC is the real king of the market. Okay, it dictates the sentiment, it dictates the movement, it dictates how high, how low other crypto assets can go. And for the most part, I see, you know, um, BTC still in peril. I still see it as a, you know, sick dog that is waiting to be treated by the smart money and the bulls, the real bulls of the market. Because remember guys, at the end of the day, um, you know, retailers do not move markets, okay? Smart money moves markets. You and I are just, you know, here along for the ride. That's it. That's all we can do. <laughs> um, we do not have the the manpower, the, um, the the algos the bots the money to move the markets like these guys do and i'm telling you you do not want to counter trade them because you will get wrecked um as a lot of people have been doing right i mean i can't definitively say that smart money has been controlling this market because i personally think this is just the normal economics of how markets and bubbles pop okay not saying that this is the popping of a bubble that's going to take bitcoin to zero but this is just a popping of, you know, a mini bubble, right? Um, a almost a correction, if you will. Okay. Um, although it's a pretty steep correction, it's hard to call it a correction, right? It's more so actually a mini bubble popping, and um, you know, prices are dropping. I mean, from all time high, Bitcoin is now at, um, you know, I think like uh, 84, 85 percent drop. Uh, almost a 84 percent drop from 20k so i mean you can't really call that a correction right so with that being said when prices are when prices are this low right you have to wait and be sure that hey are we are we creating a bottom here or is this a temporary fake out like this thing right here this is you know absolute garbage like this in no way tells me that oh well, bottom has been created i mean unless i see sustained prices like this you know for weeks on end where prices just float like this and then we create higher lows and higher lows like this um and then we start moving and taking out these uh levels right here then you might say okay you know what this could be the end of the the um you know bottom of the bear market 
and now it's time to step in and buy, okay? Now you can also implement a different strategy, which is dollar cost averaging, which is, you know, something that I do on certain, you know, alts, okay? Um, and even, you know, Bitcoin for that matter. Um, you know, every thousand dollars that Bitcoin drops, you can pick up, you know, whatever amount of money that you want to put into the market, right? Or you could just simply wait for the bottoming of the market. If you're unsure, you think Bitcoin or crypto is going to die, that's another safe way. There's nothing wrong um, in any of those strategies, guys. And don't ever think that you have to FOMO buy the bottom because this is, you know, the, the thing is, guys, um, I feel like everyone in this market has been, um, you know, uh, I feel like you're inclined to think that you have to catch the bottom so you can catch the next, you know, move to 20,000 or 40,000 or whatever. But the real traders and investors in, in markets, they make the money in the middle, okay? So they don't, um, you know, need to, uh, you know, buy here and for, you know, say for a short position and sell exactly down here, okay? They can actually buy here sell right here and make a good amount of profit and walk away you know um feeling that hey i missed out on x percentage that i could have made that's not how smart traders work they work with the best r meaning risk to reward ratio they try to look for setups with um you know good reward and you know not as high of a risk okay and that's how you need to if you really want to be a um a good you know trader and investor in the market that's how you need to think and that's how you need to implement strategies you need to think like the smart traders guys you know um, employ all their strategies and uh, know that okay this is what they do and this is what I need to do you know don't try to just FOMO by the bottom and think that okay I'm gonna ride this to the top it's just not how it's gonna work all right so on the one hour chart you can see um, there's this big, you know, bear flag being created again, um, and we dropped back out of it, came down, you know, bulls uh, caught the bottom of the price right here, pushed it back up. Now we're sort of seeing like a, um, you know, again, like a flag, or you can call it like a ascending, um, you can call it like an ascending triangle like that, um, where prices are tightening, and you could s potentially see you know, move to the upside, but I personally think that, you know, we might come back maybe as high as 3,500 and then get rejected again, because I really don't think that there's enough movement and uh, buyers in the market that are going to allow prices to move up, okay? Prices have dropped from 6,500 to 3,400 in less than, you know, what, two or three weeks, okay? Um, I really doubt it that the bear market is just going, this particular bear market is just going to end um, with, <laughs> you know, um, just three weeks of bottoming. Like, it, I doubt it, you know. I feel like it's going to be months um, until we figure out exactly where um, the bottom is. And, you know, that might be, again, as I mentioned, anywhere between um, three thousand dollars and maybe all the way to twelve hundred dollars okay let me take a look at some questions lock if you tell a smart trader you cut the bottom they don't care yeah exactly and there you go lock yeah no no respectable trader um, talks about you know catching Bitcoin at uh, 163 dollars and selling at 20k top um, they're probably going to say, yeah, I bought it 5K, I sold it, you know, 15, multiplied by my money by three times, walked away from the market, and I have it stepped back in, okay? That's how smart traders do. They don't care about, you know, maximizing their gains as much as they can because they know that's how, you, you know, you could potentially lose money. And some people could lose all their money, their life savings, you know, their retirement funds, their homes, you know, you could be in crippling debt, and you don't want that, right? Um, you want to be a good trader with, you know, good uh, risk to reward ratios, good setups, okay? So Amit asked, asked um, which OB is important, weekly or monthly? So um, what I've mentioned, guys, is, you know, as always, um, 
higher time frames will always trump lower time frames. So if you look at the weekly chart, you can see that the weekly chart is overwhelmingly bearish, okay? And you know that you know the weekly chart is going to trump the daily. I mean, well, the daily looks pretty bearish too. But you know, you know what I mean, right? Like if you look at the daily and it shows you more bearish signs and the four hour chart is showing you that hey we're printing a you know bull flag on a four hour like probably you could have seen right here okay so here's like the the daily chart okay so you see you know this hammer candle right here and a big boost um on the follow-up confirmation candle and then this indecision candle right here so a lot of people would have said hey i'm gonna buy you know because this is a confirmation candle of this hammer um but they did not think that, hey, look at the context as a whole. Okay, look at the chart as a whole and look at the, um, you know, the, the significant body size of the weekly candles. I mean, this alone should tell you that, holy shit, like we are in a significantly bear market. And I don't know if this thing is going to bottom out anytime soon. Okay, again, like I mentioned, you know, over here you had you know, nine months from this bottom right here being placed at 163, all the way till here for, you know, till September or October 2015. So a good nine to 10 months of bottoming in this range that you could have bought. That's a good amount of time to get your money, go on vacation, come back, have the prices be the same, you know, buy more Bitcoin, crypto, whatever. Okay, and I'm telling you, that's definitely what's going to happen here too. Um, you're not going to need to, you know, sit there and watch your screen every day um, for hours on end to wait for the bottom. I mean, some of you might get lucky and you may throw some lowball orders and might get filled, but it's okay if you don't hit the bottom, okay? All right, so let me get back to my chart here. Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, lock. Um, I don't know if you're making fun of me or you're complimenting me. So, uh, I guess, thank you. Um, I, I appreciate it. I, I do try to, you know, keep it real guys. I mean, I'm never going to be the kind of guy who's going to tell you, Hey, we're at the bottom. Um, like people have been saying at 6k, you can look back on all my videos, all my trading view. Um, I have, you know, I don't like to, to, to brag, but I called, 5500 and the you know 2800 to um uh 30 or i don't know what it was 3000 to 4800 dollar range back in july please please go back on my trading view videos and look at that when everyone was bullish i was probably one of the few bears that kept saying um you know prices are going to dip and here we are and yeah i was wrong for many m months and people were like this dude's crazy i don't want to you know look at someone who's just ultra bearish but you have to look at charts um, as a whole with context of bigger time frames and understand what the chart is telling you. Once you take out your emotion, once you take out your bias, and you read the chart with an objective view, it will speak to you. Okay, and I'm telling you, like technicals are really not that hard, guys. Anyone in this group watching right now can do the same thing that I can do. Maybe with a little bit of time, because I've been doing this for a while, but. You know, you can do this. And I'm telling you that, you know, this chart as a whole um, speaks volumes of its overall bearishness. And so for right now, right? So when we look at this candle right here, so here's a daily candle, okay? So today's daily candle is this. Um, here's an indecision candle right here, right? So indecision candles uh, you look at where there's big wicks on both sides, okay? And a somewhat small body in the middle, okay? And then after that, you have a, um, this looks like a somewhat of a gravestone doji or, you know, maybe like a morning star candle, however you want to look at it. Um, but this again indicates more cell pressure. Okay. So if you look at this candle, well, let me explain it. Okay. So what this candle shows you is that um, prices reached at, you know, almost $3,500, but then got pushed back down. So there's overwhelming sell pressure coming from the top. Lots of sellers sitting at prices as you know prices move up, and they're 
not letting price move up. So what this is really telling you is, you know, bears are controlling this range right here. Okay, this $3,400, $3,500 range. They're not allowing prices to move further up. So they control more supply than demand. Because remember, you know, all technicals really is, is being able to look at every single one of these candles, guys, um, tells you a story about supply and demand, okay? This candle sh um, shows that there was more supply than demand. This candle shows in this particular day that there was more demand than supply, you know, buying it up, okay? But again, you have to look at, you know, the context of the chart, right? And it shows that, okay, well, in this entire range, there's clearly more red candles, more bigger, taller bodied red candles that have controlled the range all the way from 62 or 6,500 to 3,000. So what does that mean? Well, supply exceeds demand. That's it, okay? And here's how you know prices are essentially engineered to fall down. It's because, you know, I've said this before, right? So if, if, if smart money is really stepping in, okay, and they really wanted to buy up crypto, right? What they typically would do, and again, this is more than likely illegal in most markets, but it still happens, especially in Forex, okay? So now let me explain this. So this is a little secret, and I want you to listen carefully, okay? So in this entire range, okay, so let's just say, you know, back here, smart money bought, okay? They bought here in June, they probably even bought here in September, and they push prices up to astronomical heights to 20,000. And once futures released, they started selling in this range while a lot of people are buying, okay? The average retailer was buying and smart money was selling. And what else was smart money doing? They were shorting, okay? So they knew that this is the height. They, remember, they have so much money that they already control a decent amount of supply, right? So what they're doing is they're selling, you're buying, and they're shorting. So they know that they hold, you know, majority of the supply. They're already going to push the prices down. So they made profits, you know, in two different ways. They made it on the long side and they made it on the short side. And then prices dumped and tanked they kept selling into these little ranges right here, okay? And now what happened is they want to re-enter the market at lower prices, okay? So what's going to happen is more than likely, let's just say they bought in this range, 6,500. I mean, I'm sure they averaged down all the way from, you know, say 11.7, but let's just say they bought, you know, in this um, $6,000 range, okay? So they are capable of sustaining losses and holding down the prices for a significant amount of longer time than most retailers could, okay? Because remember, they own billions and billions of dollars. And again, in crypto, it doesn't take billions of dollars to move you know, markets by uh, you know, a couple hundred or even thousand dollars. It literally takes like, like an injection of maybe 10 million bucks and you'll see you know, BTC US dollar prices you know, um, rocketing, okay? So they already know that maybe 100 million or $500 million um, is enough to um, gobble up some supply, okay? And hold down the prices and keep dumping and market selling, right? To push down the prices where retailers stops are getting hit and retailers are essentially panic selling. And as you're panic selling, they are buying. Okay, they're buying at lower and lower prices because they know that at some point these prices are going to reach, you know, again, astronomical heights, right? So that means that you're essentially selling into their buying. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't sell. I'm just saying that this is a possibility that they could take this to low prices. And this is why I said that you should just wait and see exactly where the prices are going to get defended, right? Kind of like we talked about way back here um, at the $163 level or so. And you'll know exactly when the smart money steps in and prices just stop going lower, I'm telling you. Um, it's, it's really easy to tell, guys, you know, when you know that, okay, there are some big buyers stepping in and prices are just not going deeper and there's your buy signal, that's it. You know, trading is 
really a game of patience, okay? It's a game of patience, it's a game of controlling your emotions, and it's a game of mental fortitude in understanding markets. Um, it really doesn't take a whole lot. And again, you can look up this advice from Warren Buffett and you know Charlie Munger, um, some of the biggest traders, they talk about the same thing. And they'll tell you that it's really about, you know, um, knowing where exactly to, to buy patiently and knowing exactly where to sell patiently without getting too greedy. And this is why, um, you know, I try to um, uh, implement the same style in my analysis, in my trading. And uh, hopefully you guys are learning this too. Okay. Um, honestly, this whole previous macro high is decent. Um, Locke says, uh, is decent guess at the new bottom is complicated by futures now. First time ever people can make money on the downside. Oh, it totally is. Yeah, I mean, the thing is in markets like this, um, you want the ability to have uh, a hedge to, you know, spot buying. Okay, you want people to be able to long or short the market without actually having to be directly vested in the asset. Why? Because it brings more interest, okay? It brings more attention to the market. It brings more credibility from real traders who have been doing this for years and decades and, you know, um, coming from veteran traditional markets, okay? And I'm telling you, um, um, when, these, when the smart money steps in, they will run a tight ship. There's not going to be these bullshit wicks like, you know, you see... Um, every few months, whether it's the tether FUD or, you know, crazy short squeezes and stuff, it's just not going to happen. Asakura says, so much illegal OTC buying, shorting on MEX, and then rebuying lower. Oh, I totally agree, Sakura. This is why I rarely use MEX. I feel like it's it's a total scam. Um, you know, most brokers I already know counter trade their retailers. But BitMEX is on another level. Like, I feel like Arthur Hayes needs to be in prison for the kind of shit that he allows on his exchange. Um, but, you know, hey, it, it's a free-for-all, right? I mean, you guys want a crypto, a lawless market, and you got it. You can't just have it um, one way where, you know, you just feel like, oh, well, you know, all retailers must be protected. Well, no, it's not going to happen. There's always going to be bad actors in every market, in every corner of society. And that's exactly what uh, BitMEX is. Um, if you want to take the risk and you want to buy, um, you know, 100x leverage positions, that's what's going to happen. Okay. But anyway, so here we are. I mean, you know, flagging right here, ascending triangle. Um, prices could potentially push up all the way to 3,500. I doubt it. Um, but if they do, I'm sure they're going to put, get put back down by the bearish just sitting up top, um, you know, waiting for a big supply dump. Um, because this is probably another, you know, engineered liquidity where prices are, you know, shown and essentially drawn up to look like they're going to poke higher. Um, but what's really happening is, you know, you want long positions to step up, right? Um, and you know, these people get liquidated and then prices dump hard on the downside and then, you know, more shorts step up. So essentially, this is all a big ruse, right? It's all a big game of, you know, painting a picture of, you know, trapping the average retailer because most, you know, most people on BitMEX are average retailers, okay? It's really just a game of taking money from the average, you know, sucker who doesn't know what to do on BitMEX to you know the smart savvy traders on bitmex um and even maybe bitmex itself because i'm sure that bitmex has traders of their own and you know they are certainly counter trading you guys um this is why i'm saying be careful on bitmex okay it's it's really a dangerous market um what's your opinion on craig wright i don't really have an opinion um i think a lot of people in the crypto space feel um, the need to comment on others who are doing right or wrong. Um, I just see it as others having opportunity and exploiting those who don't know any better. I mean, it sucks. They're assholes. But, um, you know, I am doing my job to um, educate the average retailer um, so you guys get smarter and you know not to fall for, you know, dumb tricks, whether it's technicals or fundamentals, 
you know, scams or whatever, right? Um, all I can say is, you know, we're here um, as a community. All you guys watching right now, we're getting smarter and we're not going to fall for the same tricks that the average retailer does. That's it. Um, my job is to help make sure that you you make more money or you at least don't lose money. Okay, and if you're part of our Cryptosomnia community, you know that you know I've put on daily analysis, um, you know, for our Advantage members every single day. I mean, even when I'm on vacation, you know that, you know, I provide analysis every single day, right? Um, and you know, here's our our community right here. You know, every day we're we're pretty much um, you know active. Um, you know, even this is our free lounge right here, right? Even in our free lounge, we're pretty active. Um, I have channels right here, Bitcoin analysis. I post here every single day. Um, you know, I, I was talking about the, the shorts earlier. Uh, this is another thing that I was talking about is, you know, people think that, you know, there's going to be a big short squeeze in the market and um, prices are going to skyrocket. Well, here's, here's an example, right? From October 15th all the way to middle of November, in BTC US dollar, um, you can see the price is essentially hovered sideways, maybe like a hundred dollar range, and you can see the shorts in that time span dropped off significantly from you know thirty eight thousand dollar or thirty eight thousand contracts almost to eighteen thousand. So it was half that. So you can see how you know shorts really don't make an impact on prices, guys. Like they really don't, because like I said, you know the people who are in. Um, uh, on BitMax or shorting, they're average retailers, and retailers do not move markets. Okay, we are unfortunately bound to the markets. You know, erratic swings. We are go with the flow kind of people. Okay, um, but with the go with the flow, right? You can still make smart decisions. You can still, you know, err, um, uh, you know, you can still um, err, err to. Uh, oh wait. Got some questions here. Sorry about that. Um, Sakura BBC says Satoshi has been identified. Everyone, <laughs> Sakura is hilarious. Um, Greg Smirnov, uh, BBC never fails. <laughs> um, what else? Do we have any questions? Uh, any exchange other than Bitmax that has such variety of tools? Yeah, Deribit is one. Bitfinex, Bitmax. I'm sure there's going to be more coming out. And and you know another thing to talk about, guys, is you know this whole. Um, ETF thing and you know backed and all this stuff right that's coming out I mean if you are part of our community like I was I was you know telling everyone that first of all ETFs have been you know people have been trying to pass ETFs for crypto since like 2013 the uh, Winkle Vi twins they've been doing that like for the past five or six years okay it hasn't happened I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon okay because remember ETFs are retailer money okay the average retailer average american consumer average consumer around the world wanting to diversify their portfolio their retirement funds their 401k um, into crypto and i don't think the government's going to allow that for such a volatile market um that you know for to them looks like a scam okay um and for the most part, I mean, you can already see SEC hunting down all these people, right? You know, uh, you saw some of the um, some of the arrests that they've made, and they're also now going after uh, crypto influencers that have been, you know, talking up ICOs and stuff. So you know that, you know, um, the SEC is really not fond of crypto, okay? But they will be fond of crypto when you know exchanges get cleaned up and they don't have rampant you know fraud and manipulation when ICOs aren't you know manipulate or aren't frauds okay when there's actual use cases being fulfilled by you know crypto um, by blockchain technology then you might see a um, you, then you might see you know an actual um, market cap movement as a whole in crypto okay? But for now, I mean, this is this is a bear market, you know. Every person who thought they were a genius when they made money from, you know, like whatever, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand to twenty thousand, I mean, for the most part, they held on because they thought the prices couldn't get lower. Well, let me tell you something, you know, the 
the, the smart traders, you know, that um, the smart investors, they don't really give a shit about um, how good something is fundamentally. Um, if they're losing money, they're going to sell. And if they've also already made a significant amount of money, they've probably already sold, okay? And they'll probably rebuy again if it has more potential. So they're not hodlers like, you know, the average retailer in our space, okay? They know exactly where to buy. They know where to sell. They know when to enter back in or when not to. And this is why, you know, um, I'm teaching you guys the same thing, which is that you need to be smart just like them and you have the capability of doing that i'm telling you you do okay so for the most part you know i will be um announcing you know my positions and letting you guys know when i've you know acquired certain alts or bitcoin eth whatever and i do this for my channel only you know um so if you want to join um, the crypto sound advantage program please do and you will get trades you know like these channels right here Okay, so let me give out a free trade if you guys are interested. Okay, so here's just one of my simple trades that I put up for my community. Okay, um, and I'm giving this to you guys because I made a promise that if we get 10 people to join our community this afternoon, um, you know, I will, I will uh, do a live stream as well as a uh, free trade call. So here we are. Okay. So I'm sure you've heard of, you know, Zencash, which was later rebranded as Horizon. Okay. So here's Horizon right here. Okay. So this, I, I put up this trade a few days ago and I mentioned to everyone. Um, and again, you know, when I put up trades, I don't just say, Hey, just buy. I, I state my reasons. I also state exactly where to buy, why to buy, what's right with it fundamentally. Um, and also I, you know, source it with, um, here are the other funds invested. Okay. Um, here we are, you know, here's Grayscale. Okay. You know, one of the large investment, um, funds in crypto, very reputed. Okay. At least in my opinion. So Zen investment trust, right? So this is a big fund where, you know, institutions can even, you know, buy into Grayscale, um, accredited investors buy into gray, gray scales and they can pick their products and one of their products is zen and if i'm you know say say i'm you know the average retail investor i'm not going to go about and you know throw a dart at a random crypto and hope that it goes up i'm going to look at where are other smart people investing that's the best way to go about investing okay um you know you don't look at the average you know Joe Schmo and see what he's buying uh, on the street. You might probably look at Warren Buffett and you'd be like, okay, if Warren Buffett is buying IBM, there's got to be something with IBM, you know, or Apple or Bitcoin or whatever, right? So I'm going to follow the smart money. And Grayscale to me is the smart money, and they're investing the Zen, and so I'm going to be investing the Zen. And here is my buy zone. Okay, so I've stated the buy zone for you. Right? It's between um, uh, 13,900 Satoshis and 10,500. You could see that if you had placed a buy order in this level, <coughs> excuse me, in this level um, a few days ago, you could see that um, it hit, okay? One of your buy orders hit in this level, okay? And you know, this is exactly why I like to teach uh, technical analysis because it works, okay? Technical analysis is nothing but, you know, um, psychology of humans being played out um, on the chart on an asset, okay? That's really all it is. This is all human psychology and human intuition and FOMO and panic and everything played out in prices. That's all it is. This is not just random price movement. This is every single human dollar, um, panic, FOMO, you know, uh, all kinds of emotions all in these candles. And it's really fascinating to look at because you can see because each candle tells you a story, right? This candle tells you a story that in this particular three day span, you know, price, people had a FOMO in prices, prices shot up almost. 10, 20% and then they came back down to their levels. You know, the candle closed literally like within, you know, a, I mean, a stone's throw right there, really. So, <clears throat> um, gray background. 
So, what what are you talking about? The outside stuff like this, right here, um, lock. Anyway, um, lock. You can message me in our Cryptosomniac channel. I, I can help you out. But anyway, guys. So Zen is one of my big buys, and you can come to our channel. You can check out. You know. Um, our other long-term calls, I mean, I have medium-term calls, short-term calls. Short-terms are essentially, you know, daily or intraday trades. And, you know, we get in and get out of positions in a day or a few days or even a few hours sometimes, you know. Um, and, yeah, we, we make money, right? We make a good amount of gains. Um, so here we are. I mean, uh, Nate, one of our, you know, fellow members, um, you know, he was talking with me and you know he pulled the trigger on his position and he made 67 percent in probably uh, a short position on mex okay again you know he knows um, after learning from our community and from me what to do i don't handhold him he knows exactly what to do now you know he's a smart person um just like other people in this channel too you know i don't need to handhold you every time for you to pull the trigger on a trade I'm going to make sure that you guys learn tonight and every night how we spot uh, technicals in a chart. So you learn and you can do this on your own, okay? Um, what else, what else can we look at? Um, okay, I'll provide another free trade. Here's Quark Chain actually. So Quark has been um, a pretty resilient uh, stock in this entire market, I would say. Um, and it had a nice little 50, 618 retrace from this bottom right here, right? So if we mark this up real quick, I'm just gonna do a pretty raw one. All right, there. Yeah, I mean, pretty much a 50% retrace right there. And it's moving up and out again, right? And it's moved up nicely all the way since, you know, August, right? It's not, I mean, it's not looking back. It's just flying, like it doesn't care. But the only thing is, you know, while you're gain, gaining Satoshi value, the, the BTC value, you're losing BTC US dollar value. So that's the real concern is that, um, you know, I don't know if you are interested in um, gaining Satoshi value right now while losing dollar value because you know you may be uncertain that hey I don't know where the hell Bitcoin is going over the next you know few months or who knows you might need you know money next month or you know next week or whatever and I don't want you to get into a trade where you make Satoshi value but then you lose dollar value okay so there's no point in that so that's why we find good setups where we know that you know BTC US dollar is stable and you know things like cork chain or whatever trades that we put on are popping off and you can make some make some gains okay again none of this you know all I do is provide technicals at the end of the day you pull the trigger right as as everyone says on YouTube you know this is not investment advice um, and it's really true I mean my job is to teach you how to pull the trigger and how to learn technicals I'm not trying to tell you like hey buy this buy that I'm just showing you what I'm doing right um, and so you can be smart yourself and, you know, do it yourself, okay? Um, oh, okay, Sakura. Yeah, thanks for helping him, Sakura. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Zen looks strong. Can you take a look? Yes, of course. Um, Eric Stolt. All right, let's take a look at Zen. All right, all right. Okay, so... So Zem is clearly um, catching a bottom right here um, over the last few months, okay? So from September all the way till November, and then it broke through this you know resistance level that was holding it down, and even retested it. So, so here's another perfect example, right guys? So say you missed this huge candle right here, okay? And you're like, holy shit, our price is just going to keep on moving up? Well, no, you you could see prices moved up and then they came back down, retested that same level multiple times, see? You can see it, it got retested once right there, 
once, twice right there, three times, and then it moved out. Okay, so you will always have an opportunity to buy into the horizontals, um, the horizontal support and resistance flips, right? So this used to be a resistance right here, right? And then it got flipped as a horizontal support, okay? So here we are. Um, I could probably see, you know, uh, Zem still moving up and out. Um, it looks like it may be forming a nice little cup right here. So prices might get up to, you know, this $2,200 Satoshi level. Um, and then it might, so it kind of like this, okay. Uh, this might be a bad cup, but I think you get the idea. So here's that cup. Then it's going to create a little handle, okay. And then it's going to take off again. So your buying opportunity will be in this handle. And typically these handles come back to, I don't know, somewhere between like 38.2, 50% Fibonacci retraces, and then they move up and out, okay? So that's your buying opportunity for Zem. Uh, can you take a look at Nano? And can I take a look at DCR? Sure, I like Decred, by the way. Um, fantastic product. Okay, let's take a look at Decred. Um, I mean, technicals I know for Decred look shitty because I know I saw it like a few days ago. Let's take a look on the weekly chart. So here we are um, for Decred right here. It looks like, I mean, prices double topped essentially right here, right? So here's, you know, that mini little double top. Here's one top. Here's two tops. And now you could probably see that if you're, if you're a buyer, okay, if you're looking to buy Decred, you probably want to wait in this zone right here, okay? This is this is an area where you can potentially get um, one of your buy orders set. So anywhere between twenty that or twenty nine thousand, twenty eight thousand, all the way to thirty nine thousand six hundred. Okay. Um, again, I haven't charted it perfectly, but you get the idea, right? And then below that will probably be this little. This is another little order block for this particular case. Okay. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on this level for, for Decred, okay? So this is, again, 28,000 all the way to, you know, let's just say 40,000, okay? Uh, Nano was my next one that I need to check. Yeah, Nano is, I mean, it's already broken the 618, you know, retrace. So, I mean, this was... It's more than likely going to come back down here, guys. Um, I, I kid you not. It's it's really not looking good for Nano right now. Um, but if prices uh, in BTC keep slipping the way they have been, uh, Nano is going to get wrecked and come back down to this low. Okay, so anywhere between you know this eighteen hundred to you know thirteen hundred, that's that's your little buy zone for Nano if you're interested. Okay, so keep that in mind too. Nano price has been over $34 on January 1st, 2018. Yep. And now it's probably worth a dollar. I've told, you know, people this many a times that, you know, you're going to be perplexed at the um at how low the prices of cryptos can go. Okay? Um cuz some of these, you know, coins are really just garbage. <laughs> I really think so. Um, I'm really also not a big fan of Tron. I don't really care for it, but I don't hate on it. Um, I know that it has huge FOMO potential and people love it because it has that hype and FOMO potential um, with uh, Justin Sun. So I've, listen, I I uh, heard about Tron and its ICO and I heard about Justin Sun when it was just, you know, literally like, uh, 10 or 50 satoshis or something um, and even then I had no interest in it because he sounded like a total you know scam artist um, but then again what do I know right um, but there's so many different cryptos out there I choose to you know dedicate my time and my energy to those that will um, you know at least have a better chance of better fundamentals or you know, better funds even, like, you know, Grayscale being invested in it, right? That's why I picked Zen. I mean, yeah, I know it had a 51% attack, but when a big fund like this invests, um, 
you know, a significant amount of money. I think it was like six or ten million dollars or something. I mean, listen, guys, they're not looking to waste their money. Okay, they clearly know something that you and I don't, right? And they probably believe that it's going to be like the next ten x or fifty or hundred x or who knows, right? Uh, do I like Nano? Yeah, fundamentally, Sam, I do, I love Nano. I actually think it has huge potential. I actually read a thread between the Nano um, founder and Charlie Lee on Reddit, which was really fascinating. So if you haven't read that or others haven't, please read it. Um, fundamentally, I do think Nano has potential. But again, you know, technicals, like, it's going to get wrecked, just like, you know, 95% of cryptos. Um, and that's okay, guys. You know, again, we already know <laughs> that we're in a bear market. There's no need to predict you know, oh, where do I need to buy? You'll know exactly, you know, when the bottom is set because BTC will dictate that. BTC will tell you, hey, bottom is set. You know, it's time to load up on your your Nano, your Decred, your, you know, what your Tron, whatever, okay? Um, Lock says, fundamentals take just my opinion. In terms of POW, there can really be one long-term. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I totally, you know, agree with you. Um, although I feel like we are still in the the hype stage of crypto, and I it, I, I heard this somewhere, and you know I want to give whoever um, quoted this uh, credit, but they said that crypto is like you know um, cars being built, you know, for a road that hasn't been built yet. Okay, and I totally believe that, right? There's so many different applications and very unique and innovative ideas in in, um, in crypto. Unfortunately, they just haven't found their match, their puzzle piece, okay? But I do believe that in the next, you know, five years or so, I really think that it's going to happen. Um, and that's why I'm saying, you know, in the next year or so, right, when the market finds a bottom, bottom is set in, another year might be needed maybe even two to allow the technology to evolve and you know have some mass adoption and some real world use case ability um, and then you can start seeing you know some of these crypto projects starting to hit new all-time highs or you know staggering price levels that you could not have ever imagined of but for now, you just need to know that we are in a bear market and you need to make a list of all the different cryptos that you're interested in. Kind of like I told you one of mine, right? Um, Zen is one. I am watching for Zen carefully. And I told you guys the exact zone that I'm watching it in so you can buy it in the same zone. I'm not telling you to buy something at you know a higher price than I've already bought it at, right? I'm telling you that we're going to get in around the same time and the same floor and I'll also let you guys know when I'm going to trim my positions or sell Zen or you know buy up more Zen um, I'm just very open in my community guys and everyone knows that okay there's no you know there's no fun in making money alone I want everyone to make money I want everyone to be prosperous and get rich and um, be happy and have a happy life and family that's that's really where you know the most amount of joy and fun is in life right when you and all your friends are wealthy. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Let's go, Vin. You think this upcoming recession will drag crypto market with it? So uh, let's go, Vin. Um, for the most part, I know that um, crypto is actually not correlated with the gold, the uh, DXY, which is the dollar. Okay, so here's the DXY. Okay. Um, this is the US dollar. Crypto is not correlated with that. You can clearly see since beginning of 2018, um, you know, the dollar has been going steadily up. And I know you're probably thinking that, oh shit, well, this means that it's inversely correlated. No, that's, that's not true at all. Um, crypto is not inversely correlated to the dollar. Um, crypto is also not correlated to the stock market s p 500 it's somewhat correlated um but you know nothing of significance okay um the real 
you know, boost in crypto markets is really through a sense of, you know, hype, hope, um, you know, potentially even, you know, other nation states, um, governments, you know, trying to ban the public from using uh, Bitcoin or, you know, those nation states that are failing having their citizens put their money into bitcoin those are some of the reasons why you can see cryptos and specifically bitcoin move aside from that you know crypto is not a hedge to the stock market nor is it a hedge to the forex or commodities market it just kind of really moves randomly on its own but you know i guess one interesting thing that i did see recently is that you know over the past you know, a few months, I did see crypto taking a tumble with the stock market, which was really fascinating because, again, like I said, it's not correlated at all. But one thing that tells me um, when that happens is that, you know, the it might actually be a lot of the, the same money or the same style of investors that are invested in the both, both being the stock market and the crypto market. They know exactly, um, you know, when to trim their positions, when to walk away from the market, knowing that, okay, well, this, you know, this, we could be headed into a deeper correction territory, deeper recession. So it's not just, you know, dumb players in the market on both sides. They know exactly what to do, when to sell, when to buy. And clearly, you know, there's buyers, um, you know, walking away from both. They're walking away from the stock market for now, um, not defending prices. And buyers are essentially walking away from the crypto market for now, not defending prices. This is why you're seeing these all-time lows or uh, year-to-date lows being created, right? So anyway, um, XMR USD. Okay, I will check out XMR USD. This is pretty much my last one, guys. Um, getting tired here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Monero. I like Monero. You know, it's it's really a interesting privacy coin, and privacy coins do have their own little niche in in this space. So so, okay. So here's the thing about Monero. It's the same thing that I talked about earlier, right? It's this is the little order block that it's going through right now, just like um, just like uh. Bitcoin is okay, so it's digging through this price and look how you know almost perfectly got rejected at you know this uh, EQ point um, equilibrium point of this OB. You know you can see this is where we had a little bit of sideways sideways movement, rejection with this weekly candle and then a big pop. Okay, so yeah, Monero is. I mean, it may if Bitcoin falls again, all alts are. Mm, 99% of alts will fall. Um, and you could probably look for Monero to hit maybe $30, $28 or so. And that could be your buy point. Okay. But again, as I've said before, you will have plenty of time to buy your Bitcoin, your alts, when the market bottom is created. You know, don't worry about a couple dollars here and there not, you know, catching the bottom. I'm telling you, you know. Um, you're going to drive yourself crazy if you think that way. If you really believe in some of these crypto projects for the long term, you'll wait. You'll be patient. You'll wait. You know, um, like like wise and uh, intelligent traders do, and you'll wait for the market to capitulate. You'll wait for a confirmation of a new you know bottom being formed and a new uptrend starting. Okay, that's that's how you're going to win. <laughs> Um, that's how you're going to sustain in this market or in any market for that matter. All right, guys. I uh, I hope this stream helped. Um, I'm gonna do one last quick check on Bitcoin US dollar right here. Yeah, so you know this little flag right here. For the most part, I would say it's like a bit of a fake out. Probably trying to panic the uh, shorts um, but you know might move back up here double top to this price come back down okay and look for this um, 
you know, uh, this low right here to be taken out. And again, I, I honestly think that, you know, prices are going to reach um, the bottom of this OB, which is 3,000. Unfortunately, 3,000 is not even a strong support level. Like, that's the sad part. Um, you know, so if prices even come down to 3,000, they're not going to stay at 3,000 for long, I don't think. You know, they're probably going to dump into the next order block, which is like 2,900 to all the way down to like eighteen hundred dollars which is a steep drop so anyway guys um as uh as jason would say keep your stops tight and um have a good night folks have a good happy friday night enjoy your weekend don't worry too much about crypto prices please join our you know um crypto uh somniac channel our discord channel right here it really is you know an awesome community i um, I'm in there like 14 hours a day. Jordan is our other analyst. He's usually there, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day. I mean, we're heavily active. Um, we like to respond to questions. I'm going to start answering these questions um, as soon as I'm off this. We also have a stock market channel where we discuss, you know, things about the stock market, um, even trades and Forex, you know, market too. We have an ICO chat. We have a mining chat. We also have, um, what was I gonna say, an education channel where I actually post educational videos. I also post um, how to chart, how to, uh, there's actually a bunch of books in here that I give provide links to, um, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. And again, as I mentioned, short, medium, and long-term trade calls, uh, margin trading, bot trading, that we, we all work together to set up bots. So there's all kinds of cool stuff. So come join, guys. I hope to see all 40 of you in here in our channel. All right, guys. Y'all take care. Have a good night. And see you soon.